Hey there, it's your boy Uncle Al, back again with another episode of Fairy Tales with Uncle Al. Today we're diving into a classic, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but with a twist, you see. We're telling the story my way, giving it a little Pacino spice, if you will. So get ready for laughs, shocks, and maybe a lesson or two. Buckle up and let's jump right in. Okay, so there's this gal, right? Snow White. Uh, not because she was born in the tundra or anything, but because she was as pale as a Christmas morning in Jersey. And she lives with this stepmom, this queen. A real piece of work, let me tell you. Cared more about her looks than a Hollywood actor at the Oscars. One day, the queen asks her magic mirror, Yep, just roll with it, magic mirror. Who's the fairest of them all? She expects to hear her name, but nope, it's Snow White. Let's just say she's not thrilled. So this queen, she gets all Tony Montana on Snow White, hires a huntsman to take her out into the woods and offer, but he ain't got the heart for it. You gotta go, kid, he tells her. Your stepmom's got a hit out on you. Snow White hightails it into the forest, running like me in insomnia, right? She finds this quaint little cottage and steps inside. It's neat, like seven Martha Stewarts live there, and that ain't far from the truth. She's tired, and after some Goldilocks action, she crashes on the little beds, falling asleep quicker than audiences during a slow courtroom drama, and then the seven dwarfs come home. Oh boy, these guys. They're like little bearded goodfellas. Got names like Doc, Sleepy, Sneezy, Happy, Bashful, Grumpy, and Dopey. I mean, if those ain't mob nicknames, I don't know what are. They find Snow White asleep, and at first... They think she's pulled a fast one on them, but she wakes up and explains her predicament. And these guys, they got hearts bigger than their bodies. They take her in, tell her she can stay, but she's got to clean up and cook. So basically, she's paying rent the old-fashioned way. Life's going pretty swell for Snow White and the dwarf crew. But back at the palace, the queen consults her mirror again. In the mirror, it's like a gossip rag. Spills the beans about Snow White being alive and living with the dwarfs. Now the queen, she's fuming like De Niro in Taxi Driver. She decides to do the dirty work herself. Figures she'll disguise herself as an old hag. Talk about going method for a role. She makes this poisoned apple. Gotta admire her dedication to the theme. She finds the cottage, sees Snow White, and pulls a classic apple a day pitch. Snow White, sweet girl, but ain't got street smarts. Takes the apple, and with one bite, boom, she's out like a light. The dwarves come home and find Snow White. They think she's dead. They're heartbroken. Even Grumpy's got tears in his eyes. They place her in a glass coffin, a tribute fit for a leading lady. Meanwhile, a prince who's heard of Snow White's beauty comes riding by, sees her in the coffin, and he's moved. I mean, he's laying it on thick, sobbing like Brando in On the Waterfront. He begs for one chance to kiss her goodbye. Now here's the kicker, folks. The prince's kiss, it actually works. It wakes her up. Apparently, love's first kiss is a better antidote than anything you'd find in a pharmacy. Snow White's back on her feet. The dwarfs are ecstatic. There's dancing, singing, a real happy ending. Well, except for the queen, of course, you see. That rotten queen. She gets an invitation to Snow White's wedding. A beautiful affair in the prince's castle. She's green with envy, but she goes anyway, still hoping she's the fairest one there. And at the wedding, they got this thing. It's like a pair of red-hot iron shoes. You can already see where this is going, right? The queen has to put them on and dance, and I ain't talking about a little waltz. No, no, she's got to keep going until she drops. I tell you, even Scarface would wince at that. But that's what you get when you mess with Snow White and her little crew. And it all ends in a wild celebration, a real Hollywood ending. So kids, the moral of the story, don't eat apples from strangers. And if you happen to stumble upon a house full of little guys with funny names, you might just find a new family. I guess Snow White, the dwarfs, and the prince, they all lived happily ever after. And the queen? Well, let's just say she danced her last dance. And there you have it, folks. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, as told by yours truly. Remember, next time someone offers you an apple, you better be sure there's a prince nearby. If you had a good time, remember to hit that like button. And if you're new here, subscribe for more of my wacky tales. Thanks for hanging out with me today. This is Al Pacino signing off. Stay safe, stay laughing, and see you in the next video. See